All right, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Boise School District meeting of March 11th. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that we always uh, run our meetings by our core values, which include respect, dignity, honesty, responsibility, and teamwork. And thank you for being here tonight. And tonight, I believe, for the Pledge of Allegiance, we have the Kelsh, Kelsh Elementary School Choir. Come on up. I think they're going to sing for us, too, even better. We get a double, a double hit. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There's land of the pilgrims pride, where the green mountains of the freedom ring. From California to the New York Island, to the Redwood Forest, to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. I was walking in the River Highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. The Golden Valley, this land was made for you and me. Your land, this land is my land, from California to New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. To be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and the love. True, some is a tedious game, to bow to the river, we shall be ashamed to turn, turn, to be on your way, to remember Turning will come round. Right. It's a gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. On when we find ourselves in the place to pray, we'll be in the valley of love and delight. It's the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be and when we find ourselves in the place just right we'll be in the valley of love to simplicity is gain the power to bend we shall be ashamed to turn turn
Thanks so much for joining us tonight and for bringing a special treat, which is songs. You guys sang three of my favorite songs. I love those three songs. I grew up singing those songs. And maybe when you're my age, you'll say, well, those are my favorite songs too. Thanks for the wonderful performance. Now I want to give you each a chance to introduce yourselves. And first of all, do you see your mom or dad out there? Somebody who brought you, so you need to wave. Wave at them. <laughs> all the way in the back. That's right. Uh -huh. So we're going to give you each a chance to say your name. And are you all in the same class? Okay, so tell us who your teacher is, okay? My name is Anthony Drake Cordero Lopez. My teacher is Miss Gillen. I'm very glad you guys are here today to watch us perform just like we just did. Thank you. My name is Addix Neumeyer, and I'm in Miss Schroeder's class. My name is Kylene, and I'm in Miss Schroeder's class. My name is Alana, and I'm in Mrs. Hartman's class. My name is Avery, and I'm in Miss Schroeder's class. My name is Izzy, and I'm in Miss Schroeder's class. My name is Rylan, and I'm in Miss Schroeder's class. Okay. My name is Lily, and I'm in Miss Hartman's class. Okay, so I have a I have a gift to give you. And if you hold on to it real tight, you'll learn some science. See what happens when you hold on to it really tight. Thank you. It has to do with chemistry. You might not have studied too much chemistry yet, but you can you can talk to your teacher about what happens when you do the, when you hold on to it really tight. So thanks to your teacher for having you come. And you know, when I was hearing you sing, I thought. We are part of a big world when you sang this is my this is my country or the patriotic song you sang second. I have so many in my mind. And I wondered someplace that you had visited either in our state or in the United States that was really fun. A place that you've visited, maybe in the whole world, some place that you visited that you thought, wow, this is beautiful. Or I'll have to come back another time. Can you think of a place you the Lagoon. It's an amusement park. It was really cool. Awesome. Awesome. And we have enough natural resources. We can run the Lagoon, right? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I've been to the Oregon coast. Oregon coast. I've been to England and I was born there. Oh, cool. I've been to Mississippi. Mississippi. I've been to Moscow. Well, uh, I don't know. Have you been on vacation anywhere? No. Have you been to any school in Boise? The YMCA. Awesome. That's one of my kids' one of my kids' favorite places. I think I've been to Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Okay. Our world is pretty big, and so is our country. And so we can see lots of things all your lives, and you don't have to have done it all right by the time you're this age. You can take lots of years to see lots of parts of the country and the world. So thanks for coming to a little bit of our world here in our board meeting and helping us start our board meeting out with the Pledge of Allegiance and some good tunes. Thanks so much. We'll let you go last. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. You know, people ask sometimes, why do you do the trustee job? And that is the reason why we do the trustee job. Oh, thanks. That's, that's my thank you for tonight. So I really appreciate that. Um, next, we're going to move on to the Red Apple Award. And I think that's Trustee Oppenheimer. Thank you, President Wagers. I'm super excited about this one. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so since 1974, Boise School District has recognized outstanding professional education with the Red Apple Award, the highest award presented monthly during the school year to certified staff members by the Boise School Board. The Red Apple Award honors teachers who consistently perform above and beyond the call of duty in fulfilling their responsibilities and supporting the district's mission of educating today for a better tomorrow. We are honored today to recognize an individual who has served students in the Boise schools for over 17 years. It is difficult to put into words the impact that Amber Tietrich has had on the community, school, and students at Boise High School. When asked to describe Amber, students 
parents and staff at Boise High used words such as passionate, dedicated, enthusiastic, supportive, advocate, and accepting, to name a few. Her positive spirit has a direct impact on her colleagues and students and the environment of trust. And community that she builds has a contagious and lasting influence on the campus culture. On the heels of the COVID pandemic, Amber became the student council advisor and leadership teacher at Boise High. Her leadership in this role directly coincides with the reemergence of student excitement and pride in campus life involvement. From dances to theme weeks, from volunteering in the community, to working with feeder elementary schools, from planning and orchestrating Boise High's annual school-wide school student summit, to arranging from the Boise famous Scotty's dog food truck, <laughs> which is provided free of charge to faculty during parent-teacher conferences, and countless other community building opportunities. It is easy to see how Amber was an event coordinator prior to becoming a teacher. Amber has modeled and taught students how to develop an atmosphere of teamwork, acceptance, and dignity that has done more for our positive school culture and community in the last several years than seemingly possible. Amber's enthusiasm for learning, her dedication to all students, and her willingness to face challenges and barriers head on are an example and inspiration for us all. She truly understands how to meet students where they are and help them get where they would like to be as the best version of themselves. Amber masterfully prepares her students for life outside of school. She supports them in creating positive and connected fun while in high school. And she often remains a constant in their lives well past graduation as a mentor and a friend. She is simply a life changer. It is our distinct honor to present the Red Apple Award for March 11, 2024 to Amber Tietrich, leadership, AVID, and ELA teacher, Boise High School for outstanding service to education and for educating today for a better tomorrow. So here are the words that were spoken, and here's your award, and I will hold it. If you. Thank you. Yeah, it's fancy. I know. Put that on your shelf. <laughs> if you'd like to say a few words, you hold it. Okay. Well, so now I'm going to sob. Um, that was so nice. Thank you so much. That was so nice. I, Superintendent Dennis, thank you. President Wagers, thank you. School board, thank you. I don't know if you realize that this this is a big deal for teachers, and we really, really appreciate it. I'm going to just <clears throat> get myself together here. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I think it's obvious, hopefully, to everyone, including especially my students, that I love my job. I have the best job in the world. I mean, I just, I feel so lucky every day. I mean, there are so many of my students here, former and today, and the Boise High community is so unique. I just feel also so, so lucky to get to work there. Um, from our administrators, to our fellow teachers, to our fellow I mean, my like my friend who's in the library is here tonight. It's just so, so, so nice. My family is here. They're all back there. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my best friend, Jen. We met at 14, and we both are from Utah, and both are educators in the Boise School District now. My mom is here from Salt Lake. My daughter, Lily, who really loves it when I shine a spotlight on Lily. And my darling husband, Andy, who is a product of Washington North and Boise High. So... Thank you, really. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you guys coming. I'm going to stick around because our my Boise Student Council, they are presenting next. So we hope to wow the school board yet again with the uh, tales and 
fantastic happenings at Boise High. So thank you. I sincerely appreciate the recognition. Thank you. Congratulations, Amber. Um, and next we'll move on to the Gold Apple Award. Uh, Trustee Gregory. Thank you, President, President Wagers. Since 1994, the Boise School District has recognized outstanding classified staff members in the district with the Golden Apple Award. This is the highest award presented monthly during the school year by the school board to classified staff members. The Golden Apple Award honors support staff members who consistently perform above and beyond the call of duty in fulfilling their job responsibilities and supporting the district's mission of educating today for a better tomorrow. We are honored tonight to recognize an individual who has served the Boise School District for over 11 years. Joni Liam is an invaluable asset to the custodial department of facilities and operations. Joni manages all incoming and outgoing paperwork fields and directs all incoming calls and emails and maintains email lists, phone and phone rosters, current custodial vacancies, employee evaluation schedules and workers' compensation status. She is the li liaison for the district between two separate sanitation services. Joni has created and maintained several documents that have become vital to the day-to-day -day operations of the custodial department. Her tireless efforts to ensure that employees and employee-related actions are tracked and accomplished in, um, in keeping with the mantra of the mission first, the employees always. During this last year, Joni has been the foundation for the custodial department while it has gone through a major personnel change. She is always available to assist when a question arises. With her patience, knowledge, skills, abilities, and expertise, the custodial department has been able to transition and continue to provide the excellent uh, customer service that district staff, students, and patrons have come to expect. Joni's efforts to contact potential applicants, assist with newly hired custodial employees, and follow up um, have both increased the staffing of the custodial department. When the potential applicants have reached out to FNO trying to navigate the application process, Joni has kindly and patiently helped each so that they are all able to apply. Joni's work ethic, professionalism, and dedication to her job embodies the district's core values of respect, dignity, honesty, responsibility, and teamwork. It is our distinct honor to present the Golden Apple Award for March 11, 2024 to Joni Lehman, Custodial Department Clerk, FNO, for outstanding service to education and for educating today for a better tomorrow. Joni, please come forward. Well, now I know how we keep the lights on. We obviously need Joni around. So, Joni, this is the award. And here are the words spoken so you can keep them in your scrapbook or whatever. And the microphone is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you all for coming. And I appreciate every one of you, uh, those that I work with, of course. Uh, thanks for being here tonight and for making it a fun job. I, I love my job. Um, it, it doesn't feel like hard work. Um, but... I'm sure for some it could be, but I enjoy every bit of it and I appreciate all of you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. I'm very nice. So so where's the where's Joni fans? There's some, all right. And where's our Boise High fans? All right. All right. We're glad that you came here to support your administrative recognitions.
Well, congratulations, Joni. So if you folks came for the awards, you are free to go, except for the Boise High students. You have to stay around for the student report for Boise High. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first, we're going to go to the Bora High School student representative. So I think you guys are up. Scarlett and Kendo. Hello, hello. Um, my name is Scarlett Cromwell. And my name is Kendo Gunter. And we're here to talk to you guys about Bora High and what we've been doing third quarter. Okay, so our goal is every, um, our student council has a goal in mind whenever we plan events and initiate things. And it's to be more inclusive to our diverse student body to promote more excitement in being a Bora Lion. So as you know, um, my name is Kendall Gunter. I'm the senior class president. My co-speaker, wonderful Scarlett Cromwell, uh, and unfortunately, our ASB vice and ASB president, uh, Andrew Rojas and Ella Henry, were not able to be here today, but you're lucky you guys got me instead. Lucky or unlucky, you guys can decide. Um, yes, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the student experience at Bora. Okay. So very exciting. We had our very first ever snowball dance earlier this month or uh, this month, January. Um, it was very exciting. We had an initial uh, date and we had so many people planning to come. And then I don't know if you guys remember those snow days that happened consecutively, but it put a major dent in our um, turnout. But even though we replant, I, I know. I know, I think we kind of brought it on ourselves, but um, it did snow the day we rescheduled it in February, and we did have a good turnout. Um, it wasn't as big as the initial planned, but it still was very successful. Our whole goal with this dance was to give uh, another option besides homecoming and prom uh, to our students because there was a high demand for besides those two dances and for a cheaper option because uh, a lot of our students have problems uh, getting the accessibility with the price tags. So we wanted to make it as easy and accessible for all of our students. So Food Truck Friday is a event that we've continued to brief on many times throughout the year. Uh, it continues in quarter three. We were really excited. We had a great turnout uh, this quarter with food trucks. Up there you can see we had a double-decker espresso coffee truck that students got the privilege to go up in and hang out in for a little while and drink coffee as they waited for their lunch period to end. And once again, it's just always a great time to get connected with uh, students, fellow students, and business owners, and it's just a wonderful event. We've been trying to get Double Decker, and they ghosted us twice, so we finally got them. It was very exciting. Um, yes, so we had our kindness board this quarter. Um, we got this idea by trying to get third quarters really hard for all the students. They have a lot of academic pressure on them, so we're just trying to think of how we can get students more involved. So we had our student council initially write some few notes, as you can see in that first picture, where you can actually read the board. Um, and then we got a lot of activity and involvement. Students uh, got really into it. And we had that end result with a lot of notes written on it. But it had a lot of popularity. And we still have it up now, where you can take a note and leave a positive note for someone else to come. Um, in student council, we had a few activities ourselves. So at the leadership conference hosted by wonderful people at Boise High, thank you so much. It was amazing. We got to connect with other student councils. We got to uh, talk with each other, share ideas, talk about leadership. We had some excellent um, speakers up there who were able to give us some great instruction. And it was just overall a wonderful experience. Uh, again, thank you, Boise High. They hosted that this year. We're planning on doing it way better next year than they did. It was a great start. Um, <laughs> Uh, also, our student council has grown exponentially this year. We've had the biggest with almost 38 kids. So we tried to get a lot of our student council um, active in our community as well. So we went to the Amity Bingo Night, and that was a huge, huge success. And we plan to go back next year. We had a, we're trying to get in more connection with our feeder schools. Um, we also have been going to the Open Book Adventures at One Stone every Monday um, and getting involved with the students there. And we are currently have about... 10 right now signed up to do the Boise School volunteering later this March. So we're really trying to do more volunteering in student council. 
sports, some of our experts. Um, our first one is one of our freshmen, our freshmen, who I have the privilege of knowing. I grew up, I was her neighbor. Um, Kaya Davis was 5A freshman of the year, um, which was very exciting. She has some very great statistics that I don't know the meaning of, but uh, they're very impressive, I'm told. Uh, 11.3 game per average and a 4.3 rebound per game. Um, our freshman girls team is, uh, it started off uh, very small. We have uh, six freshmen on the team and they've killed it this season so far. So I'm super excited, even though I'm not going to be here next year to see where they go. Uh, our other, the other freshman in the year also happens to be a Bora student. Hendricks Castro, 5A freshman in the year, got an 8.5 game average. Uh, we're just really excited for our athletes. You know, they're, be doing so well in their freshman year with another four years to or three years to grow and progress uh, we're just really happy for them and it's always fun to go out with student council members and watch the games and support our athletes yep another one of our exception exceptional teams that i'm definitely not biased toward because i'm on it is our dance team um we had the privilege of going to state um which was very exciting we made it in the palm division um which i've I've tried to explain to Kendo because he doesn't know any of the divisions, but palm divisions, when you dance with palms, um, we didn't place, but it was a great experience. Our coaches always make it super fun. And we had our spring show recently, um, which is an event that we always have where we uh, have the chance to not only pick the stress of competition off, but show it off to our parents and our um, students that don't always come to the competitions because they go from six to eight. Um, and we brought in local studios too to show them what our high school is and hopefully get more students coming to our dance team. So that was a big fundraiser that we had. And this spring break, we're headed to nationals to compete in Anaheim, California, which we're very excited about. And for the first time ever, we made it into the championship division uh, for military. So we're super excited to compete there. So uh, we just tore up our track this year and we're really excited to get a new turf in. It's looking really nice. We're gonna be the track team, Cole Walters, me, are gonna be back on it tomorrow which I've been waiting desperately for. Um, I'm really excited to have our senior sunset on our track. It looks beautiful. Um, and just to be playing out on it, it's just a great privilege. We've been driving to Boise High for their track. So it's been very nice. Um, also, sorry for the photo. I took it myself. I'm not a <laughs> photographer. Um, um, and uh, we're just going to talk about a few things that we're really looking ahead to for the next quarter. So we announced our prom theme. We're doing Enchanted Garden, and we're having it once again at the Knitting Factory. And we're super excited to get students um, going there. And that's a picture from last year's setup and our prom invitation. So our slime fundraiser is something we host every year. It's always been a big hit with the students. Students love to see their teachers get dumped with slime. Uh, it raises a lot of money each year, too. Uh, students are excited for the new one that's coming up, where we plan on dumping some more slime on our favorite teachers. Uh, this is just a really good way for us to get connected. You know, teachers are the life of the school. And when students see teachers having fun like that, having fun with the students, then it encourages people to, you know, show up and share in that fun with the staff and faculty. Um, Bora Bold uh, has been planning a lot of new things for this next semester. We're continuing with the Mindful Minutes. If you guys remembered that from the last presentation where we do video announcements, um, promoting like mental health and getting rid of, rid of that stigma. We're planning on meeting with all of our spring sports because they're just now getting started um, later and having a big meeting in the theater to try to see how we can um, encourage. We started with our fall and winter sports but we didn't really get into the teams as much as we want to. Like we kind of started it with the 988 number and suicide prevention week. Um, but we haven't really gotten into the teams as much. So we're really hoping to work with coaches and um, the ca captains of the team more to like help promote Bora Bold uh, because not a lot of students know as, about it as much as we want them to. All right. So for our senior activities, I'm the senior class president. I really love my year. I love my class. And it's just about enhancing the student experience. So this year, I wanted to host a t-shirt design competition with some of our artists. Our school is full of amazing artists. And they all put in. They all had wonderful designs. We had uh, 13 submissions. And of that, the student body got to vote on which ones they thought they were, were their favorite, which one they wanted to see as a senior shirt design. So uh, what you see up there is our winner. We're going to be printing that out and uh, selling them to seniors so that they can 
show off support for their friends who designed their shirt and for their school. Uh, some other stuff we do, the Reunion Time Capsule Fundraiser. This is another new idea that we had um, where we're selling space in a time capsule to bury on campus and then have it dug back up in our reunion year. Uh, this is another way for us to make more money to create better, bigger events for our students. Um, this is a great way for students to look forward to the future and what might be changing and to look back at the past and reflect. Uh, another things we have is our senior sunset, which we do every year. It's always a great, great time. And our powder buff game where we're playing, the guys are playing volleyball. All right, now to talk about our exceptional teacher, um, Miss Rue, which is my AP government teacher, um, is amazing. She's been teaching for 21 years and she's been at Bora for 18. Um, and she's a Bora graduate, woo. Um, recently, she did this really big interview with uh, the radio show Morning Edition through BSU and NPR. Um, and this was really interesting because not only have we been talking a lot about uh, uh, the State of the Union and government, Miss Rue always brings just so much passion to the classroom and she really encourages us to go above and beyond. So not only did she, um, she tries to get us involved in our community and go out, um, but she's also going to bring us to the Capitol this Thursday. I was going to say next Thursday. Um, and we're going to get to watch some of the legislative pro processes and meet our own district representatives. And um, it's just super exciting. Um, she's also the advisor for PSA, which is a club I'm into. Um, and she, she just brings so much passion to government. When I started AP government, I was like, oh, uh, like government, yay. Um, but she's just <laughs> exciting, but not that exciting. But Miss Rue just brings so much passion and you you feel it every day. And so many students like are like, oh, the work, but she just brings so much and she goes so above and beyond the normal teacher requirements that a teacher has to do. So that's why we chose to feature her. All right, thank you guys so much for listening to us ramble for so long. Uh, we're really passionate about our school and We'd like to hear if you guys had any questions, and if not, we can give it up to our other schools. We tried not to ramble it's, too long. It's not rambling if it's all great stuff. Uh, <laughs> we we want to hear it. Uh, Trustee Greeley, I think, to start out with. Thank you, President Wagers. Um, thank you both very much for a fantastic presentation. Love seeing, especially things like Kindness Board. I, it always is so nice to see what's going on in the schools. Just question for you. How do you choose the exceptional teachers? Is this a student council decision? Um, no, usually we get advice from our uh, principal, mm -hmm. or I go to, um, what's Ms. Bell's? She's a staff advisor, and so she advises me, and she has more information on the teachers and, like, what they're doing around school. Okay. And so she'll say, oh, our band director, Mr. Clay, is doing this right now. And she's like, Ms. Rue just did this really big broadcast with BSU, so you might want to go talk to her. So I went and talked to my government teacher, and I was like, hey, what have you been doing outside of school hours that I don't know about? So <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was a student council thing or a whole, a whole school thing. So that's really exciting to hear about. Get Thank you. Trustee Oppenheimer. Thank you. Um, thank you for such a great presentation. I love your enthusiasm. Um, but one of the things I really loved about your presentation, and you do it every time that you guys give uh, presentations, is the inclusive environment that you are all creating um, at Bora. And I just, I love it so much because we need that so much today, more than we've ever needed it. So keep up the great work, and um, I look forward to seeing how you guys finish up the year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you coming here and giving us a glimpse of Bora. So next up is Boise High. And you better not tell any lies because there's a lot of Boise High students here. <laughs> All right. Good evening, President Wagers, Superintendent Dennis, and members of the Board of Trustees, and thank you 
for inviting us to, to represent our school, Boise High. My name is Dash Estefanis, and I'm the junior class vice president. Um, and my name is Andy Bronner, and I'm the sophomore class president. And today we're going to talk about some of the amazing stuff that's going on at our school. First off is our Sadie's Haw Sadie Hawkins dance. This year, we brought back our Sadie Hawkins dance in which anyone was encouraged to ask a partner to the dance. In, in order to be inclusive to everybody in this event, we coordinated with our Saga Club, the Sexuality and Gender Alliance. Along with this, we rented a light up dance floor and borrowed lights from our feeder school, Hillside. And these, along with our own collection of lights, allowed us to effectively execute the theme of light up the night. Also, volunteers brought snacks such as fruit, veggies, cookies, and brownies. And this allowed for a quick snack break for anybody during the dance. Uh, we thought the dance was a huge success, and we hope to continue this tradition next year. Um, this year, we wanted to galvanize the Boise School District Student Council with a conference between all five of the high schools. Um, we, we hosted the conference this year at Jump, and we coordinated with them to provide t-shirts and lanyards to all attendees. Um, we also had a few keynote speakers. Um, including Patrick Ngalalume, Gia Trotter, and Superintendent Dennis, who gave us some great insight on how, how to be a better leader. Um, we got a lot of incredible new ideas from the student councils around the district, and we hope this will be a new tradition. In the classrooms, we've had some pretty exciting happenings recently. Um, of note, we have the Globales Fashion, fashion Show. This was put on by our Globales in Spanish program. This was an, a project entirely in Spanish in which students would pick a fashion designer from a um, Spanish-speaking country, and they would create an outfit and a presentation based upon this person. They then would present this in our, in our auditorium in front of our admin, families, and students from Whittier Elementary. Again, entirely in Spanish, which was pretty incredible. Secondly, we have our AP World History March Madness brackets starting up. And what this is, is each class has a bracket in which a student represents a historical figure. And they go up against another student um, and they give speeches. And their goal is to, is to convince their peers that their historical figure is more influential than their opponents. With the majority of their peers' votes, they would move on to the next round. Now, in the debate class, Yvonne Chen has qualified for the state tournament. In recent mock trial tournaments, Olivia Borman was recognized as a top witness, and one Boise High team qualified for the state tournament. Finally, in DECA, DECA Nationals are in Anaheim, California, and we have 14 attendees from Boise High. Um, for athletics this quarter, a lot happened. Um, the something we're very proud of is the construction of our brand new track and field, finally completed. Um, <laughs> It'll be home to track, of course, um, lacrosse sometimes in a practice field for football and soccer. Uh, the wrestling team had a successful season, including uh, Jack Sorensen winning one round in the state tournament and Claire Waite winning the state championship in her weight class. Um, unfortunately, our boys basketball team season concluded, finishing seventh in the conference and not making districts, which is slightly embarrassing as members ourselves. And... <laughs> <laughs> And our girls basketball team finished first in their conference, first in districts, and got third in state. Um, partway through the season, they partnered with us to put on what we call the Pink Out Game to raise money for cancer research. And we raised over $10,000 for the American Cancer Society and had a record-setting attendance. Um, our ski team was third this year in points per racer with a team of 26 pe people. And our spring sports are just beginning, such as track and field, baseball, as well as girls and boys lacrosse. Um, finally, our club Unify partnered with our STEP program at BSU and the ERR programs from Capital Timberline, Capital and Timberline to host the Special Olympics basketball tournament. Um, and it was an amazing experience for the participants, and we had incredible support from our student body. We had over 50 volunteers and many spectators, including family and students, including uh, filling out all the stands during the tournament. The Washington Street Players put on a very successful musical, Mean Girls. It was their second production of the year, 
and one of the most successful musicals in recent Boise High history. The staff support, along with the student support, was incredible, and it was an amazing show. Um, this semester, we set up our first food pantry and clothing closets for our brave students in need. Um, we got a huge donation from our Brave Parent Board to start out the pantry, and then the AVID classes um, helped out with a snack drive. Now, going back to this conference that we had, our favorite idea was Kindness Week. We picked this up from Capitol High School, and we believe that this would be super beneficial to our students and their mental health. It would be a week in which we, tr we promote kind acts through uh, activities and themed dress-up days, and it would be a whole lot of fun. This year, we also applied to be a Bronco Bold School. This means we would um, collaborate with Boise State, and they would provide resources for us to um, create, for example, our Kindness Week and things to help our students' mental health. Um, they would also provide some speakers at a few events, and we hope that they could provide some student athletes to come to some of our sporting events and participate in things like halftime games. Um, another thing that we do, another cool thing that we do in quarter three is the student-led summit, which is put on by AVID. Um, students present on topics of their choice throughout the whole day, and these lessons span from backcountry skiing, first aid, to spike ball tips and tricks. The summit is an amazing opportunity for students to share their passions with their peers. Um, it's also the host of our annual student versus staff basketball game and the Battle of the Bands competition. Uh, where the winner will get a five-day tree fort passes for the entire band. Uh, the summit this Wednesday, the uh, summit is this Wednesday, the thirteenth, and we would love it if you guys would stop by and check it out. Thank you all for listening, and we would now like to open the floor to comments or questions. Great, thank you very much, Trustee Gregory. Thank you, President Wagers. And I was wondering if your summit has a theme this year. Uh, it's the We Are Brave theme. We are brave. Okay. And so, for example, our art programs, um, a lot of our art programs are portraits, and it's people that we believe are brave. I know um, if someone in my drawing class through Miss Tietrich that we have mm -hmm. sitting over there to represent uh, school spirit and bravery. Go ahead. <laughs> See, you learn great stuff at board meetings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Clever idea. That sounds really good. Um, and uh, your Special Olympics, was this the first time you did the Special Olympics? Uh, no. I, I'm not sure how many years we've, uh -huh. <laughs> we've done it so far. Yeah. But um, I, think it's, I think it's been a tradition over the past few years. Okay. That's, that's a really big draw if it isn't in a great crowd for a great cause. And I'm sure that you gave them the thrill of their lives. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Thank you. Trustee Oppenheimer. Thank you, President Wagers. Um, I love hearing about the, the leadership conference. Is that the first is this the first year that you all have done this? And is it open to everyone in student council from all five schools? That's yes. amazing. How many do you know how many students you had? 150. That's incredible. Um, but another thing that I heard is that you are all learning from each other. And that's one of the things we love about our student advisory council. And you are all doing that on a way bigger scale at this leadership conference and just picking up little things that you can do and learn from other schools is really amazing. And I think that that's really what it's all about. So fantastic presentation. You guys are very good presenters. Thank you. Thank you so much. Superintendent Dennis. Uh, thank you, Tris, uh, President Wagers. Um, I, I just want to compliment Boise High, Ambora, Capital, um, Timberline, and Frank Church. Uh, it was an honor to be able to come um, and visit with you guys a little bit at the that leadership conference and just the idea behind how we can learn from one another on how to be better leaders was phenomenal. So I wanted to thank you for the invitation. Um, I know that you guys invited me to do that. I don't know why, but I appreciated it. Um, so thank you guys very much. You guys did an unbelievable job. Be proud. Thank you. And thank you for showing up to the conference. Uh, really, a lot of your uh, wise words really stuck with us. So 
Well, I appreciate you saying that. Wise. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Seeing none. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Students, if you have something better to do tonight than sit through the rest of the board meeting, you are free to go. But there's lots of good stuff coming. All right. Well, we will go ahead and move on to consent agenda items. Um, is there any item that a trustee would like to pull from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Trustee Greeley. Thank you, President Wagers. I move approval of consent agenda items one through five and closures one through 17. Second. Second from Trustee Gregory. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor of approving consent agenda items one through five and closures one through 17, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, next, we're going to move on to reports and recommendations. And first on that is the just for kids and tuition increase. Director Roth. Uh, President Wagers, trustees, we are here tonight to talk about um, a tuition increase for just for kids. So we're, I'm gonna start it and then I'm gonna hand it off to Allison. Um, the mission for JFK really is to provide a service for our entire community. And it really is about developing kids, um, providing before school, after school care and summer care for kids five to 12. Um, and, and like it says up there with a the cognitive uh, emphasis and emphasis on the physical development of kids in our community. So that has been our mission for a long time. Um, I wanted to start because I really wanted to brag on Allison and her team um, because she has led a Herculean effort during COVID to keep JFK open and to provide our entire community childcare. She closed for one day and then opened back up. It was incredible and reimagined what, what, how we could do child care uh, during a pandemic. So um, so she, like I said, closed for one day and opened back up for essential workers and people in our community that, that had to have child care. Um, so she did that. With that, we have, over the last few years, have had faced some budget concerns. So the, one of the most important things to know about JFK is they are tuition-based, so they are self-sustaining. So they're part of the district, but they are their own entity. They have to um, be self-sufficient financially. So their budget, you can see, is the overwhelming majority of her budget is staffing costs. It's a 91% of the budget. Next slide. So um, we have a projected budget deficit. So as you know, um, we uh, gave our classified a very well-deserved uh, pay raise, right? We absolutely had to do that. It was the right thing to do to keep our employees with a livable wage. Um, you can see during the pandemic, um, the uh, the income, uh, excuse me, the tuition increase, we did not increase the tuition at all. And we did that through Allison's leadership because, and she will talk about all the grants that she has um, went out and sought to make sure as we have increased wages, right, we did not have to have a tuition increase. Um, but right now we are at a, a crossroads where we are going to be asking for a tuition increase. So the next slide talks about all the things Allison and her team have done. It's kind of a tricky thing because if we don't have enough staff, then we can't have more kids. And without more kids, we can't get tuition, right? So she has done an incredible job of going to job fairs, of going to our principals to ask if high school seniors could come to work. Um, she's done social media posts, everything you could possibly think of 
to find employees she has done. She's looked at combining programs, having people travel, work at one site in the morning and then go to another site after school. So as, as many options as, as been possible, she has found. Um, she has also incentivized the position and she's gonna talk about the grants that she's been able to get, but to um, get new, if you're an employee and you bring another employee, we'll give you a bonus. Um, if you ha already have a child care license, you come to us with that, we'll give you a bonus. So anything we can do um, for uh, finding full-time help, she uh, full-time and part-time help, she has done. Um, so I'm going to have her talk about the grants um, that she has um, received over the years. Thank you so much. Um President Wagers, Superintendent Dennis, and the Board of Trustees, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this. And Stacy, thank you very much for leading it off. And um, I kind of get a little choked up, but I'm going to pull some strength from those high school students who stood here unbothered, you know, presenting to you. And I thought if they can do that, then I can do this. Um, but I do want to just take a brief moment. You know, um, Stacy mentioned how. JFK has remained open this entire time. The better part of three decades, we've been serving the parents and patrons and the kiddos in the Boise School District, um, providing before and after school care. Um, and, you know, when schools an announced that we were going to need to be closed, we did. We took Monday to regroup um, and Tuesday opened two essential care camps out of Whitney and Grace Jordan Elementary Schools. Um, we ran a an abbreviated summer program um, so that we could allow for social distancing. And in the virtual school year in 2020 to 2021, when kids were um, going to school online, we provided care at six locations so that students could attend school virtually, but within a really healthy, safe, warm, supportive care environment. Um, and that really isn't me um, because I'm not the one on site every day. I'm not showing up at 7 a.m. greeting kids at the door. That's really the staff. Um, so uh, congratulations really goes to them. Um, but yes, we've ha we've taken a lot of actions up until this point, specifically not to put a any undue fi financial burden on the families. Um, we made uh, conscious efforts not to raise tuition rates. And in fact, up until 2020, tuition rates and wage increases through the district remained in step. And so we only ever increased as much as we needed to with that, with a wage increase on the classified salary schedule. Um, and that was one of those uh, graphs that you saw pulled up previously, which will be repeated here in just a moment. But um, I second that, you know, we needed to in increase wages. I, my staff definitely needed that so that this is a, a job they can keep. They proved in 2020 that this is a job they want to do. And I really wanted to, you know, be behind the efforts that this is a job that they can keep, which is why we tried to really incentivize, bring staff on um, to, to kind of so that we could increase enrollment. Um, we were also uh, able to take advantage of the um, child care funding and the grants that um, Idaho Health, Health and Welfare helped to facilitate in 2020. And from June 2020 to June 2023, we participated in all four phases of that funding. Um, and there are, you know, stipulations that go along with being able to um, or to be able to receive those grants. Um, and we were able to receive them to the fullest extent that we qualified for. And um, all of it went towards staffing costs because you saw that wonderful pie, you know. Um, up until 2020, actually 85% of our budget was staffing costs and about 15% was operating costs. And um, I only mentioned that to say that it's now 91.9 because we've tried to uh, reduce operating costs wherever we could and put, put it towards those staffing costs. But we really are at a space where now tuition needs to help make up the gap. So um, I just, there's that graph again that kind of shows how it was in step and in 2021 to 2022. And obviously in 2020, we made conscious efforts not to raise rates whatsoever. And then since then, 5% um, only. 
So um, just a little bit of, uh, you know, we're, we're amongst peers. We are the lowest currently um, that I have been able to find. Not every program uh, hosts their tuition rates online. Um, but in terms of Boise child cares that offer before and after school care, here's a little bit of a sampling of them. You've probably heard of many of them. Um, we're currently at full-time care is $359 a month. That means a student is enrolled before and after school, Monday through Friday. The average for a non-JFK program is currently sitting at around $553. Um, I should just say that a, on, on a couple of these, they only have weekly tuition rates. So I did just do for a four-week month. Um, but you can see, <laughs> based on the graph, just how low we are in comparison. Um, so really, that tells me that these other wonderful, licensed, high-quality child cares, this is what they need to charge to keep their lights on and to pay their staff and to make sure that they can continue to have doors open um, for their kiddos coming in. So if we only raised rates 5%, which is what I can do without board approval, we would be sitting at 377 a month. Um, and uh, those other programs, many of them have updated their 2024 tuition rates, and many of them have gone up from that previous graph. Um, and there would be, you know, roughly a $200 difference per month between us and the average. Um, and I highlight that just to say, again, this is what it costs to run a child care in Boise if you want to offer the type of care um, and the type of um, environment that we do at JFK. So the proposal is to really reset, to do a reset button um, and to really make sure that our um, tuition rates are where they need to be, honestly, so that we can continue to operate. Um, and that's a sustainable option so that we can be around for another 30 years. Both my kids go to a JFK. My daughter's only in kinder. I'm really hoping that, you know, she, that their lights are still going to be on and she can be a part of that program. And I know many, many families are too. So we're talking about an increase to 549 a month for that um, monthly rate. Again, the average non-JFK program is sitting at about 595, and we're proposing 549. That's my presentation, maybe not short, maybe not sweet, but if you have questions, um, I'd happily stand for them. Thank you very much, Allison, appreciate it. Any questions from Trustee Oppenheimer? I figured. Weird. <laughs> that this presentation's happening tonight. Um, Allison, thank you for, and, and Stacey, thank you for that. Allison, I will say that you were honestly one of the true heroes in our community. And, and I know how hard you work and I know how much you try to uncover every, pick up every rock and look for any solutions that you have. And I know that this is hard for you to come to us and, and ask for this increase. Um, I mean, I, I will certainly, for everyone, vouch for you in that um, child care costs are skyrocketing. And with losing the, the federal dollars that came through health and welfare, especially immediately, um, I like to say when the legislature stole $50 million from child care, because that is what happened. Um, it, um, I'm allowed to say that today, by the way. Um, <laughs> it, it's unfortunate. And it puts, you know, folks like you in um, just unimaginable situations, because I, like I said, I know how hard this is. Um, you're not alone, and and I hear every single day that childcare programs are having to raise their rates to compete. If you don't have childcare workers, you can't offer childcare, and families can't go to work. So it's a really tough balance. And while every other child care program in the Treasure Valley is also raising their rates to be able to compete to hire workers, uh, when you can go to McDonald's and make more uh, than you can caring for children and supporting families, uh, we have a problem. And this is a s systematic problem that we have in our, in our country, quite frankly. Um, 
it is tough. And I know how hard this is for you. And I, and I know it's going to be hard for our families. I really like that you were able to present um, sort of a comparison with what is happening um, across the city. Um, I also say that, you know, our kids went to JFK. We were very fortunate to have our kids in JFK. Um, and the importance, all the other child care pro programs are great, but I think the value that having JFK, it builds that connection with families at a very young age with the school, and they're not having to, to bus somewhere else and go somewhere else and spend all that time after school when parents are paying all this money and they're spending most of the time on the bus. Um, just the value that JFK brings to our community, I think, is incredible, and you're doing a great job. So with that, um, I, I'll be supporting the increase. President Wagers? Uh, sure. Trustee Benyon. Thank you. Well, I just want to add on to what Trustee Oppenheimer said. I mean, it's it's heroic what uh, what you've done to keep um, just for kids open. Only me uh, closing one day is just unfathomable. So I, I just want to to uh, commend um, you and your staff. Um, I I do want to ask a little bit about the. I mean, that's uh, though I certainly appreciate the comparison with uh, the rest of. Um, the area and child cares, it is a little over a 50% increase. Um, I mean, obviously uh, you need it to continue to, to operate, but do you, have you um, felt out the impact and, and how that's gonna impact families that are currently um, receiving the services and stuff? Yeah. Uh, trustee Benyon and uh, trustees, Allison and I and um, the committee kind of looked at that. Of could we do something, uh, kind of a mid-step? The issue with that is she can only raise it five percent a year, and so to come back every year, we thought if we do a one-year reset, right, and then hopefully the lines will be more in line, so they won't be um, it won't be so askew would help. Um, I also wanted to say in July, Coeur d'Alene School District has a very similar program to ours. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. Plus. But plus, but they went through the same thing where they went to their board and and asked for a very significant increase as well because of the disparity. So, thank you, President Trustee Langley. Um, thank you so much for that presentation. It's uh, it is amazing what you've been doing, and uh, I I tremor to think about what would occur if we lost Just for Kids because it's an amazing program. I just want to have, ask a couple of technical questions so that I have a little bit more of understanding. Um, and it's kind of a two-part question, but one is just explaining how um, the facilities, if there's a rent back from the facilities or if the school district is providing any resource there on how you use the facilities at the schools. Thank you for the question, Trustee Langley. Um, do you mean that rent back to the schools of our space? Yeah. Um, we uh, we ha have worked out with the principals at uh, schools where there are JFKs. Um, and uh, previously, the city, well, previously it wasn't really okay for us to have other programs be operating out of our facility because we're a licensed child care. Um, but I went back to the city compliance and um, basically since COVID, and we were able to figure out how we could allow the schools to utilize these spaces for pullout groups, for intervention services, for boys and girls clubs doing like lunch and learns, those types of things. And so starting this year, we really made it um, universal that the principals, all they have to do is um, fill out a little form for me. So I know that um, what program's gonna be there, who's the contact person at the school, um, what days, et cetera. And as long as it lands between the hours of 10 and two, where there's no overlap with our students and staff, um, they can use it as much as they want. And so Valley View is using it for intervention services and for Boys and Girls Club. Whitney is using it for speech and language um, therapies, um, therapists to do pullout groups. Um, and it's not at any cost. They're just able to utilize the room and because um, we're not there. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, 
And then my other question is, is do you guys have uh, any kind of support that gives like tuition breaks or uh, support to families that are struggling to pay that you're, you're accessing maybe like the safe program that we have? Do you guys collect donations or anything like that? Trustee Laney, thank you for that question as well. Um, we are an ICCP provider, which means that families that qualify through assistance uh, for assistance through the state for the Idaho Child Care Program were able to take their co-pays. Um, in order to be a part of that program, we have to meet a higher threshold than, um, than just be licensed through the city of Boise. Our staff have to do additional trainings um, and meet addi like additional regulations, um, but that is what we're able to offer um, at this time. And one last question. Yeah. I, I have heard met a lot, uh, many times that you guys often have waiting lists. Is that still the case for our school district? I don't know the the waiting the current waiting list situation at each site because mm -hmm. there's 13 I elementary school sites. But um, yes, uh, we have had a waiting list, and a lot of that has been the staffing because I think it was Trustee Oppenheimer who mentioned like you you can only have as many enroll as many kids as you have staff. There's a one to twelve ratio. So for every staff member I hire and et cetera, like full-time staff member, I'm able to accept 12 more students. Um, so we have had waiting lists, yeah. But usually throughout the year, we're able to clear most of them where we can. That's great. Thank you so much. Thanks you for the questions. Uh, Trustee Gregory. Um, I just have a quick question. What are, what are the hours that JFK operates? Thank you, Trustee Gregory. We're open at 7 a.m. and then school. Um, kids get dismissed to go to school, 8.45 or 9.15, and then we reopen when school gets out and we close at 6. Okay. On non-school days, we offer care from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. to any family registered for that any part of that day at no additional cost. Mm -hmm. And when schools have early release, we start care at the early release time, 1.15 or 1.45, and close again until 6, again at no additional fees. So you're just coordinating care. Exactly. With it's a wrap around the school day. Um, Completely. So non-school days, portions of the breaks, et cetera, we're also providing care, usually at limited locations, um, but from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Can you follow up? And so are um, the bulk of your employees full-time employees? I have um, 12, excuse me, 12 site coordinators. Mm -hmm. I'm doubting myself now, but I believe I have 12. Uh -huh. And about 20 part-time staff, or about 10 part-time staff members and about 10 full-time before and after school child care providers. So yes, now the bulk of them are um, benefited staff. Okay. President Wagers. Yeah, thank you for this presentation. And I can really respect the, the work you can do and, and the costs associated with it. I know my parents used to pay more than their mortgage for, for me to attend. Uh, after school care. Um, I'm curious about just some of the technical details with, is is there like a legal requirement that JFK is a self-sustaining program um, or is that a requirement that, that we, the board, have created? Um, and is there any uh, collaboration between JFK and the Boise Schools Foundation, um, particularly for students who maybe fall in a gap between the ICCC, excuse me, ICCP program and, um, for example, uh, free and reduced lunch qualifying students. Trustee Raj Bandari, um, trustees, uh, there right now there is not, uh, like Allison said, we have the ICCP program, but as far as collaboration with um, uh, the foundation, because the foundation say funds really are a one-time um, kind of help for a family where this is more of an ongoing expense. And so while I'd love to say yes, we would love to open up for donations. It's it's uh, it's a different um, kind of mission for a one time uh, boost. And then I can't remember the first question. It was just any legal requirement for the JFK program to be uh, self sustaining. That's a great question. I would have to get back to you. I don't know if it's a legal requirement or just the way that it's how we we've always operated. So I can find out. I just know that it is a self-sustaining en entity. So I can get back to you on that. Thank you. And, and follow up on that, President Wagers. Sure, go ahead. Um, is there any opportunity for 
like needs based tuition at JFK, where the average still remains that 549, but maybe parents who are able to pay more pay more, and parents who can't pay as much pay less. Uh, it, Trustee Rasmundari, it's, uh, I don't feel like at this, this time I, we could answer that question. We would need some time to, to go back and look at that. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will need a motion if we want to move forward with this or not. Is there any trustee willing to make a motion? Trustee Greeley. Thank you, President Wagers. Um, I move approval of the JFK tuition increase as outlined in the report. Second. A second from Trustee Langley. Uh, any discussion among trustees on this? President Wagers. Trustee Rosmondari. Yeah, I, I, I'll be voting for for the motion. I am. I'm a, a little bit hesitant just with um, thinking about parents and and families who maybe really rely on this child care, but, you know, might not be able to afford such a, such an extreme increase. And so, um, I, I just would hope that we consider some, some ways to, to make it, uh, to make tuition equitably available to, to families perhaps in the future. Um, yeah. And I know that would probably take coming back to the board and some, some changes, but I, I just hope that's something we'll, we'll consider, but obviously this is something that's needed for the program. And so, uh, I'll be voting for, yes. Any other, uh, Superintendent Dennis? Uh, President Wagers and Trustees, I think it's really important to understand that um, that this reset, although a huge rate increase, allows for the JFK and for Allison to be able to incrementally increase costs without having to come back to the board year after year after year. Um, I think it, 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 it puts us much more in line with what the costs are to run this program. Um, you know, we, we can second guess whether or not we should or shouldn't have tried to remain flat during that time period. But I, to Allison's credit, I think it's it was it was so important that we try and get ourselves out of some of the inflationary issues and the cost of living issues that not that we're out of them, but they've stabilized um, a little bit more than we were at the beginning. So I think this provides her an opportunity kind of do a reset. And I think that was a key word that was used in the presentation that I think may have gotten missed because um, now she can take a look at those um, those costs on a yearly basis and see if we can't uh, make those adjustments without having to come back to the board year after year. President Wagers. Uh, Deputy Superintendent Roberts. President Wagers, Trustees, I would also like to remind you that at the majority of our Title I schools, we have um, Boise City Parks and Rec that helps us do before and after care. We have um, relationships with boys, the Boys and Girls Club. So we do have programs for, for a lot of our families that could not afford to use our Just for Kids. Uh, Trustee Greeley. Um, thank you. And Allison, thank you for the presentation, and Stacey, and all the work that you did to continue, well, the amazing work you've done all through, I mean, whether it's through the pandemic and coming up now. Thank you for the, it's such an important relationship you have with the Boise School District and how you are partnering and helping us out during the days when you're not running. The, um, but I also am just really grateful that I know it's not an easy ask to come here for, but it, to continue serving all the families that you will be able to continue serving with the increase. Trustee Langley. Uh, thank you again. We can't say enough thanks uh, clearly, but and we mean it. <laughs> but I do want to say it's a good for us to remember, and I'm going to remember this as I go into this vote, that we spent over the last two years an inordinate amount of time considering raises and coming alongside the um, BEA and the classified staff in order to uh, accomplish exactly what you're facing now. And it, it speaks volumes to the fact that you were able to stay flat at a time where our community was really struggling to stay in the workplace and provide child care to their children when maybe uh, one of them had to uh, pull back from being able to work or what whatever the case may be during the pandemic and immediately after. So um, 
if this is not something new for our board, we have had to stand here and make these decisions across our district over the last two years and make giant jumps in what we did for our educators and our classified staff in order to get to the social norm and the uh, expected uh, ability to pay staff and keep them and for them to be able to uh, live. And that's questionable even if we were able to get to a living wage or not, but we're on our way. So um, this is nothing new. And I will keep that as a memory to what we have gone through and what you're facing now and commend you for the effort that you've been putting through. Um, just one brief one for me. So we did spend a fair amount of time on this in the strategic planning committee um, and talking about the increase and the difficulty associated with the increase. This is nothing that Allison wants to do. I mean, but the only way to keep the program going is to raise the pay and pay people, you know, a wage where you can recruit folks. And she's not wrong when she says, I mean, my candy workers make more than just for kids people because I had to pay that to keep candy workers. It was my only way to stay there. And, you know, so it, it's kind of a program survival, but that does not mean, I mean, back to Trustee Rajmandari's point, that we cannot assist in trying to find ways to help people, you know, do those things. And we, you know, I think we will do that as a district. That's what we do for our, not only our employees, but we also do it for all our parents and our students. We will continue to strive to make that accessible. If not, help them to apply to those programs and help them make those things that have that chance to be, to give quality child care. Because that's part of what a parent needs to survive from, you know, 7 a.m. We have to have jobs, so then we can afford to pay for these things. And it's a never-ending cycle. But I appreciate your time in kind of coming through this. But I also pre appreciate the deliberation associated. This is not something that's taken lightly. It is a big increase, Trustee Binion. No doubt about it. it and it, it's kind of with a heavy heart, but it's what we have to do to make this continue to work. Otherwise, we just don't have any teachers in those classrooms. That's kind of our other choice. So it's, it's a tough vote. Um, anybody Wait. else? President Wazers. Trustee Rajmandari. Thank you. Um, yeah, sorry, just one thing I was thinking of, um, to Deputy Superintendent Robert's point. Um, do you know if the, the programs we have at Title I schools that are subsidized, um, like what capacity those are at and kind of what, what the demand is looking like, um, both at Title I schools and among underprivileged students across the district? President Wagers, Trustee Raj Bhandari, I wouldn't be able to answer that necessarily across the district, but I would tell you that like all of our programs with Boise City um, Parks and Recreation are free to families. That's just right. a collaboration that we have with um, Boise City Parks and Rec. And but are they operating at capacity, or is there like are what I'm I guess what I'm getting at is like are families being turned away from those programs? The trustee Raj Bhandari, trustees, I do not believe they are being turned away. Okay, that's really good to hear. Thank you. President Wagers. Trustee Benyon. Yeah, um, I would uh, invite um, Just for Kids to to come back. I, th I, I would want uh, you to come back in in maybe even more of a regular cycle, not every year, but um, I, I, I hear uh, the feedback that with this reset, the 5% adjustment should be able to keep pace. Um, but I would love not to find ourselves in a position again where we're asking for a 50% increase. That just seems, I understand the rationale and I'm going to support it, but it seems uh, a rather significant increase. Um, and I'd love to just keep pace with it as, as we progress forward together. Any other? Trustee Gregory. Thank you, President Wagers. Um, I, I also, it, it occurs to me that um, uh, I think that there won't be, I would project that some parents are not going to be surprised <clears throat> because they are out there working just like these, uh, like your staff is coming to work and they're going to recognize that their own businesses have had to make adjustments for the same reasons that you're having to make adjustments. And JFK is kind of part of school community and those parents value the connections that JFK has with their school. And they also know that it's in their best interest of their children in the care of JFK to have steady, consistent employees that have relationships with their kids because these are their kids. And so um, while we are having to make an increase for the sustainability of the program, it's in the best interest of the kids that we are able to 
attract and retain employees that will give the service that parents have come to expect. So, um, you know, there may be some conversations between parents. It's a little wringing of hands, and I know that there will be. But, um, you know, I trust that, that everyone will handle it in uh, with as much explanation and as much, you know, tenderness as you can. But this is the reality of being able to provide a program. And uh, it's not a... Um, it's not a one-up in terms of all across the country. This is a, a problem. Childcare is um, a challenge when you don't have the resources to pay your staff. You just can't provide the service. But parents have to have the service because they have to go to, go to work. So I'll be supporting the motion. Any other discussion? President Waiters. Professor Osmondari. Real quick, to that point, what what was the the date of that the rate increase will go into effect? Is it next month or is it next this month? Uh, Trustee Rajmandari, this will be effective the start of next year of twenty four twenty five. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure y'all will have a really robust communication strategy to. I mean, it, it, we we won't catch parents by surprise. Uh, Trustee Rajmandari, yes, that's why we wanted to come to you right now so we can give parents lots of notice um, of this change. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, so, so many questions. Any other comments? Any other comments? Uh, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor of the JFK tuition increases outlined um, in F1 for school year, starting school year 24-25, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And all your efforts, Allison. I know this not easy in lots of ways. So um, with that, we'll move on to math textbook adoption. adoption. Supervisor Ray. President Wagers, Superintendent Dennis, and Board of Trustees, thank you for um, giving me the chance to um, speak with you guys today. Uh, my name is Shelly Ray. I'm our math and computer science supervisor. And I've been working with our teachers and um, our community and our students on a two-year process of adopting this textbook. Um, so this is the textbook for our integrated one, two, and three. Our graduation requirements are integrated one and two. Uh, and um, it's for our high school um, space. So... In the last two years, last year we worked, I worked with our secondary teachers, all uh, 13, all 14 sites um, to decide if we could look for a new textbook. Uh, the only expectation for nominating a textbook was it had to be either on the state uh, review sheet or in Ed Reports. Ed Reports is a third party review platform that looks at um, textbooks and in three categories. And so um, both of those, uh, either one of those had to be true for a t teacher to nominate a textbook. And then the other c category was it had to stay in the integrated pathway. So we weren't interested in leaving the, um, that pathway and going to the algebra geometry, algebra pathway. So that's the difference there. When um, the teachers had a chance to, you know, review all these documents that I sent them, uh, they nominated about three textbooks. I sent them copies of all those books from the publisher when they uh, arrived at the site. And so they had a whole semester to go through them and look at them and decide what their school wanted to kind of look at for the next following year. So at the beginning of this school year, um, the schools had chosen Envision and Agile Minds as two textbooks. I brought them in for the August training days so that the teachers could be trained to Math teachers kind of like to start the year with one book. And so instead of trying to squeeze something in, uh, we gave them the option to start the year with a book of their choice. And so several of our schools started with a textbook that they were trained on in August. During that first semester, I collected feedback from the school and the teachers using last year's um, college algebra rubric. The committee had made a rubric there. And so I just borrowed that one. <laughs> to kind of get the conversation going. In December, we had a department chair meeting where all the secondary schools were at. 
and we discussed kind of our next steps. Are we moving forward? Are we happy with where we're at? And because we've done such extensive work with our um, clarity work, with the learning intentions and success criteria, it, uh, it was a choice to have the junior high stay with CPM because even if, because this is the book, it's not what we teach. We teach the learning intentions and success criteria, so it's okay that we have two different resources because those are common across all of our platforms. So junior high was really committed to staying with CPM and it was unanimous among all the junior highs and the high schools could not come to a consensus. And so they chose to continue with the textbook adoption process. And so they voted that night to take Agile Minds off the um, table because the criteria was either one of these books we have to be excited about. And so they chose Envision and CPM. So uh, I headed up a textbook adoption committee in January. We had 13 parents, 11 teachers, and one student. And um, we made another rubric. And uh, one of the big passions of that committee was student access to digital resources um, outside of a student login. So that was a very big um, sticking point for this committee. And uh, we made the rubric. We sent it back out to the teachers during January and February. I got that feedback back. And we met again in at the end of February to review the data. Some of the highlights are Envision definitely um, ranked higher in almost all categories. There was one category that they didn't. Uh, and it was very um, evident to the parents that they really liked the resource, the parent portal, and the digital um, access that they would get at home. Uh, only one member voted for CPM. Um, the rest of the members voted for Envision. Looking at the student data, we had more than half of the students like practicing during class time, doing their work during class. But along with that, 83% uh, of our students um, appreciate a digital math resource that provides that instant feedback, that continuous, I don't know if they like the continuous problems, but they definitely like the feedback. And 8% um, of them weren't very excited about having a print book. Uh, that was a big issue with the committee. They were really adamant that everyone needed a print book, but we put that on the survey and only 8% of the kids wanted it. Uh, they're happy with the digital platform. And um, the other part was students were really interested in having those notes and worked examples in the classroom. And we looked in the resource to make sure that that was a strong feature. And taking both those um, things into consideration, the teachers, the committee, and the students, uh, we were overwhelmingly uh, want to adopt uh, Envision for the high school uh, integrated one, two, and three. So the committee recommends that the board adopts Envision textbook published by Savis for our integrated one, two, and three for grades 10 through 12. I will stand for questions. Thank you, Supervisor Ray. Uh, Trustee Langley. They are. That it, um, President, uh, President Wagers, um, <laughs> Dusty Langley. <laughs> um, the question was, yes. Um, <laughs> in, so that was a huge issue in the committee. And they were really worried that, you know, with this book and I think one of, um, I think it's a little misunderstanding. It is our resource. It does guide a lot of our decisions and it is um, their tools for instruction, but the actual outcomes and what we expect kids to learn in integrated one, we have a lot of different um, ways that kids earn that content and it's consistent across because we've worked really hard to make sure they are. And we're pretty excited about that work. And so I feel very confident in that. But on the flip side, we will continue to review. So like if the next school year we start noticing something and we feel like it's a textbook thing, we'll continue to um, reassess and find a good solution for all of our students. 
Yeah, go ahead. So I'll, Trustee Langley first, and then we'll go to Superintendent. Good to your follow up. <laughs> so the, the, the other question that kind of tags along with that is then if they start in one and go to the next, like they start in ninth grade mm -hmm. or eighth grade or whatever, and then they go into, um, will the, the difference of the learning style, like using a textbook versus using the digital resource that's, is that going to, I mean, be the educator, tell me. Oh, no, can President <laughs> and Trustee Langley, um, we have, so I think that our teachers are so amazing that it, the book is only part of the puzzle. And so having a different book in our junior high and a different book in the high school, I, I don't foresee it being an issue just because the learning intentions are tight. I mean, a kid is pretty flexible in reading. This book is published in this order, that, and it'll just enrich their opportunities to be able to, oh, this math book was organized this way, this one was organized that way. Then our AP classes are organized. I mean, every single course after integrated three is organized a little differently. So I don't foresee a problem because of the work we did with the learning intentions, but we'll continue to watch and see if there is. <laughs> Superintendent Dennis, you were a math teacher, weren't you? I was. Once upon a time. I was. All right. Uh, I did not read the, I did not read the textbook. I, uh, I let Shelly do all that work um, and the committee. Um, what I would what I would tell you though is this is not new. Anytime we do a textbook adoption, um, there are concerns as far as holes within the learning continuum for kids. Um, whether or not those actually manifest themselves, I think that's why we have professional educators in our classrooms that take the time to to identify if there are holes. Um, I think the difference between where we are now and when I taught math. Um, is is that the the strength in our curriculum is the learning intentions and the outcomes that we expect for kids, and so um, irrespective of the textbook that we adopt, those aren't going to change. And our teachers know those things and they understand that curriculum uh, inside and out. So I, I really want to assure the board that it feels a little wonky, but this is not new for for our um, for our district. Thank you. Any other questions for either Supervisor Ray or our math teaching superintendent? <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Gregory. Um, does this have a price tag? I'm sorry? Does this have a price tag associated with the adoption it does. of this book? Uh, so um, we have a, we'll enter into a five to six year or three. We have a couple options. Uh, it's a one-time fee. So it, the, even though we have that digital access, it won't be an annual mm -hmm. um, cost. It's a one-time. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll present those in, during the budget process. It, it is. Uh, Trustee Oppenheim. Thank you. Just one quick question um, about the process. You mentioned that there was one student on the committee, but then you surveyed the students in junior high and high school? or. Um, did I hear that right yes, or wrong? Yes, so we had one student on the committee, uh -huh. and then uh, on the committee, they said, we really want to know what the students, um, we, the young man that was on our committee was a little less uh, vocal than some of the other students I've worked with on a textbook adoption committees. And um, so he, he said he wanted his peers to have a say, and so what we did is we took the uh, adult version of the tech rubric and we turned it into um, student friendly so they they would participate in the survey because they were just multiple choice mm -hmm. questions. And uh, we got a pretty good, we got over 200 kids. Okay. And we did target high school um, because they would have had two different experiences. They would have had one from junior high. And then if they were part of the pilot program, they would have had that also. So it kind of gave us a good sampling. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I would move to a motion. Trustee Gregory. Second. Second from Trustee Greeley. Any discussion from trustees? 
One thing I've got is I really appreciate the process that we do now. And, you know, it doesn't just happen by you coming forward and saying, this is what textbook we should do. <laughs> there's parents involved, there's students involved, and obviously teachers have to be involved. Um, it just feels much more authentic. I know it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but, you know, if we run a good process, we end up with a good result. So thank you for running that process, Supervisor Ray. Um, with that, we can move to a vote. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Textbook, math textbooks will be adopted beginning next year. Great. Thank you very much. Um, next, we are going to move forward with the. Uh, uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll just stop the meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we have a trustee that wants to resign, which I can't imagine why. Um, but Trustee Oppenheimer. Uh, yeah, once. Well, I have I have this letter here. I'm really hesitating giving it to you, quite frankly. Um, I love this. I you don't you don't have things. to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the right thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, but just did want to just um say a few words if I can. And we are not crying, folks. We're not ha we're not doing that. Um. But I just want to say um, thank you to everybody. And it has been an honor and a privilege to work alongside all of you from the administration to the board. Um, we've just had such a great time. And we have navigated some pretty interesting challenges <laughs> along the way. Um, and but we we got through it together, and we got through it um, as a team, and and I think that that's one of the things that I really value about working alongside all of you is that we do operate as a team, and um, we're always learning and we're always uh, putting our best foot forward. So really appreciate it. I'm going to say one of the hardest things that we've ever done is try to get out of the parking garage in um, San Antonio when. When Maria wanted to do the the uh, escape room, and I was like, "We can't even get out of the parking garage, Maria. We're never going to get out of the escape room. <laughs> someday, someday, we're going to do the hardest thing we've ever done." <laughs> kind of an inside joke, but um, I, I like I said, I really do value each of you, and I'm excited to see um, you guys continue to grow and learn and be a team and. Just love on each other as as we always do. We don't always agree on things, and you know we've had some pretty tough conversations. But um, what I love is that we can do it with respect with one another. We can listen to one another, um, and sometimes we can disagree and commit, and that's okay. Um, but the majority of the time, I think that we um, are pretty much on the same page. And so, thank you to all of you guys out there. Honestly. Um, we, we sit up here and, and have to make some hard decisions, but you guys are the ones doing the work and I'm talking to the administrators and the teachers and, and everyone involved. So, um, I, I'm not going to read this. I'm just going to give this to you, I think, but that's all I have to say. And just thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to be coming back and forth. Annabelle is, uh, going to finish her senior year next year. So Jonathan and Annabelle will be staying here. And so I'll be coming back and forth to, to visit with them. And I will maybe chime in a little bit and give you a call when I come back. So here oh, it I is can hardly wait to get your yours. emails. That's great. <laughs> here it is. And um, thank you again to everyone because it, it really has been an honor and privilege to, to work with you. All right, well, first we're going to do the motion, and then we're going to have some discussion about it. Mm -hmm. So would somebody like to make a motion? Trust, Trustee Greeley. Um, President Wagers, I move to accept the resignation of Trustee Oppenheimer effective immediately. Is there a second? <laughs> Sorry, there's no second. <laughs> I, I don't know what we're going to do. Out of oh. respect for Trustee Oppenheimer and, and confidence in her decision-making process, I will second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion among the trustees? Trustee Greeley. Thank you, President Wagers. Beth, I'm glad you said we're not crying. Okay, thank you for that. 
Um, and thank you for your service, not just for the state, for how important the work you do for early education. Um, but I was reflecting today about um, the impact you've had here. And, and I think one of the things that you should be so proud of that you are, um, that you really made move forward along with uh, Andy was the student advisory committee. And it, um, as you said, we continue to learn and grow. I mean, other than, like, there's so many ways that I feel like I continue to learn here, but that has been one of the most exciting places where here, working with the students and having student voice um, with us. And I so appreciate the work that you and Andy did to create that and to give our students that, um, that voice with us. So that I think you should be so proud of that that is going to you know, continue lasting. And I'm grateful for it. <laughs> Perry is actually making this council happen. So kudos to, to you for doing that. Trustee Gregory. Thank you, President Wagers. Well, I just have to say that maybe we can still learn from you in DC or something. I think that I have great admiration for your, um, your smarts and your strategy in doing the work that you do. And um, I feel like I uh, have almost been tutored along the way when I see how smoothly and with such um, presence you present your uh, message to even hostile audiences. <laughs> politically in this state. And so, and yet you make friends and they are colleagues. And, and I just know that you've been a great example to us in moving our, our um, initiatives forward and our plans forward and, and working with you has just been such a pleasure to, um, to be shoulder to shoulder with someone that wanted to be a team player as we, as you commented on. So thank you. And we look forward to seeing the product of your next ventures. Trustee Langley. It's definitely a blow for us as you leave. And it says so much about what you've been able to bring to the board and to the state of Idaho that it is such a blow. But you're on to bigger things that will continue to, can you continue to affect our world positively. Um, but it is, it is hard to say goodbye to, to you. You fill such a specific and important role on this board. And we are all different. And it has made our board stronger that you were such a pivotal member of it. So it'll be hard to say goodbye. President Wazers. Trustee Benyon. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm just, uh, I wish I could be there in person. Um, I just wish I had more time on the board with you. I, I feel like I have um, a lot more to learn and, uh, and I watched you and looked, um how you have handled yourself in in these uh, meetings and in our deliberations over the past few months and um and you've uh led with such uh with your heart <laughs> and with uh, a lot of grace and, and dignity and um we're gonna miss you so um thank you president wagers trustee rajmandari uh, Trustee Oppenheimer, thank you for your service to this district and to Idaho, and um, I'm looking forward to to seeing you continue to serve the students of Idaho, but not just Idaho, the whole country uh, in D.C., and and um, we'll be following closely to see where it goes. But yeah, appreciate your service on this board. Right. Uh, Superintendent hey. Dennis? I, I didn't agree to not to cry. Um, let, let me say this, Beth. Um, one of the things that I've always appreciated about you is your passionate energy for kids. That's it in a nutshell, your passionate energy for kids. I've, I've told people for a long time that in order to be a successful board member, you have to love this district, which means you love teachers and kids. And you checked all the boxes. So thank you for that. Thank you for believing in me. 
Um, and thank you for the work that you've done for this district. Now, I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands coming up. So when you come back, um, I'm more than willing to go out as long as we don't call it a meeting and I don't have to wear a tie. We can go out and have a drink or whatever you want to do. I am glad that Jonathan and Annabelle are going to be around because I feel like I can still have an opportunity to be part of your family. So thank you. Still mad. Yes. But happy for you. And happy that you get to work on a national stage instead of on a state stage and a local government stage. Um, I've learned a lot from you. And you've pushed me really hard. <laughs> really hard sometimes. Um, but I need that. And we all need that. But you've always done it with respect and what's, you know, what's best in mind. And we always have, we haven't always agreed. Actually, there's been lots of times we haven't agreed. And we left and we came back and it was fine. And I'm not like that with everybody. And I didn't think I was going to be like that with you when we first started. <laughs> but we both learned and we both changed. And I think the district is better because you were here. So thank you. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> uh, with that, I guess we'll move to a vote. Um, all in favor of accepting the resignation letter from Trustee Oppenheimer. Say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the dais. I'm sorry. <laughs> and what, when when you come back for Annabelle's graduation, I'm pretty sure we will have a seat on the stage for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so now we have to move forward with we, we're not going to replace trustee oppenheimer but we will fill the seat eventually um so i need a motion for um declaration of vacancy trustee trustee greeley okay uh, President Wagers, I move to declare Trustee Oppenheimer's seat vacant. Is there a second? Second. Second from Trustee Binion. Any discussion on declaration? I mean, this is part of our process that we have to go through. We have to declare the seat. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, next, we'll talk about the trustee selection uh, timeline review. Um, I've spent a lot of time on this lately. Uh, what we are, you know, I, I guess it isn't exactly what we hoped. I mean, we never like it when a trustee um, has to, and I, I would view um, Trustee Oppenheimer as having to resign. I mean, she has a new job. She's starting that April 1st. And so here we are in March. We've got a, we've got a seat of trustee, um, what I would call high season for trustees. Um, in high season for administration, trying to teach trustees what they need to know. And because we're entering strategic planning, we're in the middle of strategic planning, in the middle of our budget process, and we'll go right into approving those in uh, April, May, and June. So we tried to consider how to do that in an appropriate way, do an expedited process as best we could, um, considered several options, but eventually we have to rely on our policies and procedures. 
And our policy, our procedure basically outlines that we need to have a public process and we need to call for applications. So we do have to call for public applications for this. Um, and what, what I'm hoping to lay out, and we can have more discussion about this as trustees, but um, you know, what we hope to do is actually starting tomorrow morning, we, we, thanks to uh, Clerk Mast and I think numerous other folks in this room, I think we're gonna have an electronic application process. And so we'll be able to start taking applications tomorrow morning. Yes, no, noon, when? Noon, noon tomorrow. Let's say noon tomorrow. Um, and then once again, this is, we, we can have discussion around this, but we're hoping to start taking applications at noon tomorrow. And then we will take them through, um, at least my hope is through May, um, Monday, March 25th at noon as well. So we'll give a, you know, post a two weeks, two week window for folks to apply for this opening. Um, and then, and then we are going to have, I think, a special meeting on Tuesday, March 26th to consider those applications as trustees. And so that's, that's my hope as far as a process from there, you know, we can either go to an interview we can go to director appointment. We have options, um, when we get to that selection process on Tuesday, March 26th. Um, any other points that need to be made or comments or questions about that process, what that looks like, feels like? I mean, it, I feel like we've been doing this too much, but um, people have lives. Deputy Superintendent Roberts. President Wagers, trustees. So I just want to clarify that whoever is, a, that this seat only runs until the yeah, thank, thank, board election. Yeah, very clear. So we will have an election in September. They will just fill out <laughs> the remaining, what is it, like five months of trustee Oppenheimer's seat. They will have to run for re-election that seat will be open. They don't necessarily have to run for that seat, but that seat will then have a four-year term remaining that that person will run with because Trustee Oppenheimer just got elected a, a year and a half ago. Thank, thank you for that. Um, any other questions, comments about the process? Uh, Trustee Gregory. Uh, President Wagers, I think the process looks good. It has sufficient time. Spring break is right in the middle of that. Um, and the application process is going to be a little bit more streamlined than the written copy before. So um, I think that you've outlined a good process to get us moving so that we're ready to go. They may not be ready to go on April 1st. But right. You know, or and really, I, I forgot to say, our goal is to have a new trustee seated by the April board meeting and, and seat them at that board meeting, Minister Leo. So, you know, really a pretty fast one month turnaround, but. We've got a lot of work coming ahead of us, and it'd be great to have a full team at that point. Any other? President Wagers. Trustee Rajmandari. What was that time on Tuesday, March 26th? Um, I think right now we've got it set at five. And a lot of that is just because we've got a whole bunch of people in the room, and they can't go home until we have a meeting. I don't imagine it'll take very long. Um, at least that's, well, it, it'll take a little while because we'll be deliber deliberating over applicants um, and trying to get either down to, and you know, normally the goal is when we do the app process there is we're trying to get down anywhere from five to one, you know, at that point. Five it being on the high side and one being, if, you know, if there's just one candidate that's super awesome, that could be the person. But, you know, in the past, mostly we've gone to an inter interview process with three or four people. But that doesn't mean that that's what we have to do as a board. Any other questions? Uh, Superintendent Dennis. Uh, President Wager, do does the board want to set a preliminary date? Um, I know that uh, Sharon has been looking at some potential times um, for April 1st in case um, interviews are necessary so that People can get that on their calendar. We don't, doesn't yeah. mean the board has to use that time. All right. I would. I, I guess. Yeah. Sharon did mention to me. I mean, and then this is so. If trustees, I. I don't. You know, we're not calling a special meeting for this day, but April first um, looks like that will be an evening that's possible. And I don't have a specific time yet. We will probably set. We would set that on Tuesday, March twenty sixth. We would actually set that date and try and decide among trustees when they're actually available. But. In the meantime, if you would hold that April 1st evening open, I think most folks indicated they had that open, um, 
then we'll hopefully be able to move forward with that process. April 1st at five or at six? Oh, I, I don't know on April 1st yet. Um, but if you do maybe hold the most of the evening open, that would be great. Is there is there a time when you can't make it, Trustee Osmondari, on that night? I'd prefer so six, but whatever works for the board. Okay. I mean, that will probably, you know, if we do go to interviews, it's typically, you know, we give 20-minute interviews, and then we race it out in between, and then we actually try and deliberate that night so people aren't waiting. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like, does everybody have a good understanding of the process? I think we will be able to have a press release out tomorrow on that, so folks can, can know what's tonight even. Okay. We'll try and get that out tonight, so folks can start, understand if they choose to apply. Great. We would love to see, of course, we want to see good applicants, and a little bit about what Superintendent Dennis said earlier. Yeah. It would really help if you love the district, you love teachers, and you love students, um, and that would, that would be a good starting point. Um, and we'll go from there. We also like a wide variety of expertise as well, um, and so that's something we look at too. Okay, with that, great. Thank you for your comments on that. We are going to move to other business. Oh, <laughs> Director Anderson. Good evening. We have um, five policies up for first read tonight. And just a little context, um, every year there's a chunk of policies that gets reviewed by um, one, of the, one of the departments. And so the 5,000s are human resources. And so um, Jason and his team reviewed all of these. And the, most of these changes are changes because they needed to be in line with either updated law or with our um, certified or classified employee handbooks. So. I'll stand for any questions. Okay, just a reminder, these are first reading only. So it's the first time basically the trust with this packet, it's the first time some of the trustees, have seen them, other ones on the governance committee have seen them. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or adjustments, it's great to get with Director Anderson. She will uh, be happy to either explain or accommodate, which one of those things are. Um, and then we can move forward to a second reading next meeting. Any, any questions or comments for Director Anderson? President Wagers. Trustee Osmondari. Was that change, the removal of like herbal and plant-based products, is that just to, that's just putting everything in our drug policy as far as uh, non-tobacco products, right? Sorry, in, in policy 5232. Trustee Rajmandari, um, the change there was to make it match the, this is about 5232, it's to match the, the language in the certified and classified handbooks. So... It was that okay. was what was taken out. Okay, thank you. And but we have a, we have a separate policy for like yes for student local, nicotine local local drugs. Yes. No, for for staff as well. Yep. Yes, okay. that's correct. Any other questions on the first reading? Seeing none. Okay, we'll move on. Thank you. No second reading, so away we go. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Looks like we have need of an executive session. Um, Trustee Greeley. Thank you, President Wagers. In accordance with Idaho Code Section 74-2061B, I move that we go into executive session. Moved. Is there a second? Second from Trustee Langley. Uh, Clerk Mass, can you do a roll call vote? Trustee Wagers. Aye. Trustee Langley? Aye. Trustee Greeley? Aye. Trustee Gregory? Trustee Rajbandari? Aye. Trustee Benyon? Aye. Motion passes. So we'll move into executive. Oops, I got to go. We're now out of open session. We'll move into executive session. Um, we'll reconvene. Are we going to? We're going to go upstairs. Um, so we'll reconvene back and we'll reopen the session and close the board meeting at that point. But it could be on probably a half hour or so.
The board meeting is currently in executive session and will resume shortly.
All right, I need a motion to go back into open session. So moved. moved from Trustee Gregory, second, second from Trustee Greeley. All in favor of going back into open session, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're back in open session. Um, we have a few action items from executive session. Trustee Greeley. Wagers and that we uh, place employee a discuss during executive session on paid administrative leave pending investigation. Second from Trustee Gregory. Any discussion? All in favor of placing employee A discussing an executive session on paid administrative leave pending an investigation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. President Wagers. Trustee Greeley. I move that we place employee B on paid administrative leave pending investigation. Second. Second from Trustee Gregory. Any discussion? All in favor of placing employee B discuss an executive session on paid administrative leave pending an investigation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. President Wagers. Trustee Greeley. I move that we place employee C. Um, on paid administrative leave pending investigation. Second. It's been moved and seconded to place employee C, discuss an executive session on paid administrative leave pending an investigation. All, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. President Wagers. Trustee Greeley. I move that we place employee D on paid administrative leave pending investigation. Second. Second from Trustee Gregory. All in favor of placing employee D discuss an executive session on paid administrative leave pending an inv investigation. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. That is the end, I think, of executive session. Um, action items. With that, we can move to board trustee superintendent comments. Any comments from trustees or superintendent? Trustee Gregory. Um, this would be a good week to write to your legislators if you have opinions about setting the public education budget, uh, and the new guns in schools bill, the um, restriction on getting an absentee ballot, and uh, the tuition tax credit um, that is moving through. And come if you want to come. I think it's on Tuesday. Is it tomorrow morning? Oh, right. It's okay. Lots happening fast and furiously. Right. Oh. Yeah. They think they have things lined up, but they need to hear from everybody. So send an email to all your relatives who live in Idaho to defend public education. Great. Thank you for. If they live far, like in other districts besides Boise. Besides <laughs> Boise, yeah. They just affect us. Um, any other comments from trustees? Trustee Gregory. I move to adjourn. Second. Moved is there. Second from Trustee Rosmondari. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.